From London, I'm Rochelle Travers, and this is The Standard. The following is a special Valentine's Day cut-down episode of our sister podcast, London Love Stories with Katie Strick, featuring an exclusive interview with none other than the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan. To hear the full episode, search for London Love Stories with Katie Strick wherever you get your podcasts, or click the link in our show notes. Now, you didn't actually think we'd let Valentine's Day pass without marking the occasion, did you? If you're a loyal London Love Stories listener, you might remember a promise we made to you at the end of Series 1. I think it had something to do with a little Valentine special, if we were feeling really generous. Well, you'll be pleased to know we've kept to one half of the bargain, at least. Because we do have a special February the 14th episode for you, I'm happy to announce. Though it's turned out not to be quite such a little one in the end. In fact, the special guest we have for you today might just be one of the biggest names in London. Yep, it's the Mayor of London himself, Sadiq Khan. I've I've got to be romantic in private uh, in case my daughters cringe and get embarrassed. And I tease people with them when I say, yeah, we, we, haven't, we haven't arranged marriage, you know, when we were very young. I go, wow, really? Yeah, did you, you know? And then I, I sort of carry on the story, they say, yeah, we arranged ourselves, though. That's the, you can get to the top by being nice to people, by loving people. Um, you know, those that have read, you know, Little Prince Machiavelli, you know, I'd, I'd rather be loved than feared. From The Standard, this is London Love Stories with Katie Strick. I therefore declare... Sadiq Khan to be elected as the new Mayor of London. It's been eight years since our protagonist Sadiq, then an esteemed human rights lawyer and parliamentarian from Tooting, was voted in to succeed Boris Johnson as the third mayor of our capital city and the first ever Muslim elected mayor of a Western capital, a position he has since described as the best job in the world. I grew up on a council estate just a few miles from here. Back then... I never dreamt that someone like me could be elected as Mayor of London. It was just a month before the EU referendum at the time. And in his two terms since, he's introduced the Hopper bus fare, written a book about tackling the climate emergency, and entered into a now notorious public spat with then-President Donald Trump. If somebody starts tweeting about me, A six foot three child in the White House. Can you let me know? But today, well, we're not going to talk to him about politics, or Trump, or unlimited bus fares, unless they relate to bus related love stories, of course. Because it's Valentine's Day. And it's not every day we have the Mayor of London in the hot seat of a love stories podcast. And on camera, in case you want to watch him squirm under the spotlight, at standard.co.uk. So buckle up and plug on in, because today we have a very special interview in which we're going to hear about the mayor's own love story with London. And we have a few little scoops for you, from his and his wife's go-to date spots to the surprising dating advice he gives to single friends today. Hi, I'm Sadiq Khan, and this is my love letter to London. Now, this episode's Winding of the Clock takes us back to the year that is 1970. Paul McCartney has just announced he's leaving the Beatles. Tory leader Ted Heath has just succeeded Labour's Harold Wilson as Prime Minister. And Amar Ullah Ahmed Khan and his wife Sarah Nisa Khan, a British-Pakistani couple working as a bus driver and a seamstress, have just welcomed their fifth child into the world at St George's Hospital in Tooting. They might not know it yet, but this particular son, one of what would eventually become a grand total of seven, was to go on to have a particularly unique relationship with the city they decided to call home two years previously. My mum and dad are incredibly, weren't, my father's passed away and were, were amazing people. So, so, so my grandparents migrated from India to Pakistan after partition in 1947. Really brave, big, big uh, sacrifice they made. So if you're a Muslim, you tended to move to Pakistan and if you were Hindu or Sikh, you stayed in India, generally speaking. So they're really courageous people. My parents, incredibly courageous, courageous and brave, they travelled four or five thousand miles to come to London for a better life for themselves and their families. So they've travelled, I've got two generations of cars travelled thousands of miles. I've gone nowhere, right? So, so, I, so I was born in St George's Hospital in Tooting. We lived in a council estate a mile up the road. Uh, my mum now lives a mile up the road this way. And all of us live within a mile, two miles radius of my mum. So we are, we've not moved anywhere, all right, compared to 
three generations of cars. I've still got vivid memories of, oh, I come from a big family, I've got six brothers, a sister, mum, dad, and we used to live on a council estate in Tooton Wandsworth, Henry Prince's estate, and my dad, I don't talk about this much, was a bus driver. Uh, but anyway, my dad was a bus driver and he drove the 44 bus. And the route of the 44 bus was along the main road outside the estate. And uh, I've got fond memories of uh, two of my brothers and myself being on the top deck of the bus. So, that, so if you think about the front of the bus, double decker bus, my dad would be below. In those days, there was no CCTV cameras. So the way a bus driver would see what's happening on the top was a periscope with a mirror. You'd look up at the bus driver, and there'd be a mirror, and you see at the top, and we'd be at the top looking down at my dad while he was driving, and he'd be driving around London, and we'd pretend to be driving at the top. I've got memories of going to Trafalgar Square, us climbing the top of the, the lines, and we're quite boisterous as boys, as you can imagine. How has your, if you picture London now, which you must do a lot in your job, what image comes to mind and how has that changed over the course of your lifetime? What, what do you think of London? Yeah, well, well, one of the, well, I mean, I've, always, I've always lived in London. There's only one year I didn't live in London when I was at law school and I lived in, just in Surrey in, in a place called Godalming. And so, you know, when I think of London, I think of the people I know, my friends, my family, my work colleagues, because most of the people I love are in London, they're Londoners. And so for me, the connection with our great city is not just the places, you know, Trigger Square or the great parks or the great culture we have, but it's what you do when you're there. So my fondest memories are of going to certain gigs with different people, or it could be going to certain restaurants with different people or being in parts of our city with different people. So when I think of London, I think of, you know, Londoners. Now talk to me about Tooting. So you were obviously born in Tooting, raised in Tooting, still live there today. So Tooting is the best part of the greatest city in the world. Right? And, um, and not many people know this, but very soon after I became, I used to be the MP for Tooting before I was, before I was the mayor of this great city. But very soon after I was elected, uh, we heard this news, it was 2005, that there was a scientist at NASA who had found a, cr a new crater on Mars, I've never found before. And uh, if you find a crater, you get the pleasure of naming the crater whatever you want. And this chap had an association with Tootin. So you tell me any other places in London that has a crater named after it, Tootin does. I did not know that. Yep. And so <laughs> for me, Tootin is home. And so the story of Tootin actually is a microcosm of the story of London. Why do I say that? London is a capital city, but obviously we live on an island, and our island has had for you know millennia people arriving to the island and changing the demographics of the island, Anglo-Saxons, Normans, and so forth. And so Tootin, if you go back you know, 60 years post Second World War, even go back before, uh, it's people arriving. And, it, and Tootin changing and evolving because of those new arrivals, whether it's you know, the Irish community, lots of my friends growing up were you know, Catholic Irish descent, West Indian community, Tamil community, uh, Pakistani origin, my parents from Pakistan, Indian, East African, uh, more recently, uh, you know, Somalian, even more recently, Eastern European, and so forth and so forth. And so Tutin changes as new people arrive. That's what makes it so exciting. And so, you know, someone like me who has spent a lot of time as a boy going to Tutin Market and Broadway Market, they, they're still there, but the sort of shops that were there before have evolved to newer shops. And, and that's the joy of Tootin. It's always changing, uh, but at the same time, uh, there are some things that are, that are constant. That was a special cut down episode of London Love Stories with Katie Strick. To hear the full thing, search for London Love Stories with Katie Strick on your podcast provider or click the link in our show notes. The Standard will be back tomorrow at 4pm.